Live from the Southern Art Space in Creef, this is The Sofa Show. Your hosts are Megan Rockliffe and George Carson. Wow, it's great to be here. Wow. Look at all the stuff that we've got here, uh, Megan. I've got uh, a hero bear done by Debbie Thursk. Uh, these wee hero bears she made for all the different uh, uh, various people that were you know, special uniforms for, for each and all the emergency services and things. Fantastic. Beautiful. Um, we've also got a lovely handcrafted model boat here made by Tommy Stanners. Um, you can see he sort of painted the boat himself and all of the people that are on the boat have been made um, from individually carved blocks of wood so that's great just lovely that is fantastic and i've got a very colorful uh, plate here it's called a, a rainbow glass dish made by jane drysdale this is where you keep all your spare rainbows when you're looking for them we've also got some beautiful knitted tea cozies here um, by anne keelan um, the piece is entitled a cup of hope there yeah and i've got this fantastic this has been a it's called a freestyle embroidered uh, notebook cover so uh, when she, she actually writes the, the embroidery uh, as it's going and then draws these beautiful pictures. It's absolutely fantastic. It's done by Caroline Moore of, uh, of Creek. And of course, finally, these lovely cushions, which Fiona Wellstood uh, got made specially for the Strathairn Arts. So here we are at the Sofa Show. What is the Sofa Show? The Strathairn Online Festival of Arts. Well, just before lockdown, Phil Mistecki of Strathairn Arts Got together uh, over 40 local creative people from uh, 20 different community groups, uh, businesses and organisations to discuss how the art community of the area could work more closely together. Of course, the pandemic and lockdown uh, initially put paid to this until Phil had the idea that maybe we could put on a show online. And uh, after quite a few phone calls and a lot of emails, the idea started to take off. So here we are, the Strathairn's first online festival of arts, celebrating the extraordinary range and quality of local arts, music and cultural activity in the Strathairn area. And we hope that you're all going to have a fantastic weekend. The event has three main aims. To help the local community come together in a way that has just not been possible since the lockdown. To support our local musicians, artists and arts organisations who have lost significant earnings as a result of closed venues and cancelled events. And to raise money for Logos Youth Project here in Creef to help increase opportunities and access for young people interested in developing their artistic and musical talents. Working in collaboration with a, a number of local groups such as Southern Arts, Creef Folk Club, Southern Music Society, Remake, Chris's Gigs, uh, Culture Perth and Kinross, Kids Week in Creef, KG Dance, Sherbert Music, Creef Arts Festival, Creef Succeeds, Dance for Life, Drovers Trist and Logos uh, and many others. We'll see a weekend of events and activities showcasing uh, local arts, music and culture with a mix of live and recorded events with competitions, workshops and panel discussions all taking place online via a uh, uh, streaming services like Zoom, Facebook Live and YouTube. Now we're worried about our sponsors and how we've managed to make this all happen. We've received funding from the Touring Network, sponsorship from Glen Turret Distillery, Campbell's Bakery, Creef Succeeds and Morrison's Academy, as well as kindly been donated prizes from Creef Hydro and Victoria Bloom. Um, everything across the weekend is free, um, to attend and take part in and all that we ask is if you're able to make a small donation via our Just Giving page. Um, the details for that will be available on screen now and at the end of the show so that's www.justgiving.com forward slash campaign forward slash sofa. Um, again that will be available at the end of the show. Uh, there's plenty of things for you to get involved with yourselves. There's lots of workshops, including a guitar workshop with Dan Jones. There's dance workshops for children aged uh, 3 to 7 with KG Dance. Creative sessions with Remake Scotland. Dance for Life with Janice Fraser. And ukulele workshops with Nigel Gatherer. 
We also have quizzes, a variety of different music shows including Creef Folk Club, Strathern Music Society as well as a mix of other local musicians playing us out on Sunday night. There will be interviews and Strathairn's Got Young Talent hosted tomorrow by our very own George Carson. So that will be something not to miss. Um, we're very excited about that. So here's a wee sample of what's to come with Strathairn's Got Young Talent. I am really looking forward to that show tomorrow afternoon. The children are fantastic, aged between 10 and 15, with a mixture of uh, songs and dance. It's going to be a great show, so please try and tune in if you can. As well as all of that, you can get involved yourselves by entering submissions to the lockdown exhibition. So what have you been getting up to yourselves uh, through the lockdown? Have you been taking photographs of the scenery round about? Writing poems, perhaps? Or taking part in, in various forms of art yourself? If you have and you want to share that with us, please send, let us know and, and send stuff in. If you enter it to info at strathernarts.org, that's the email address, and put in the subject matter lockdown exhibition. Uh, we will look at some of the things that have been submitted to us over the weekend uh, on the second sofa show, which will be on Sunday evening. So we're looking forward to that. Full details about everything that's happening over the course of the weekend is on the Strathairn website, which is www.strathairnarts.org forward slash sofa. Again, these details will be available at the end of the show. So first up in our short series of interviews um, is when George caught up with the lovely Neil Thompson from Creef Folk Club. I got the jelly belly roll. I think it's playing with my soul, Jelly Bean, Jelly Bean. Neil Thompson, good evening, singer-songwriter and legend in the in Creef. How are you tonight, sir? Well, I'm fine. I don't know about legend in Creef, but uh, certainly uh, we're all ready for Sofa Fest. Now, who, who's involved with the with the folk club now, and where do you meet? And and um... Can anybody well, join in, or how does it work? The folk club was started in 2017. I was asked by David Campbell if um, I would be interested in uh, hosting a, a folk club uh, that would be based at the art space. And I like the idea that uh, it would be linked into um, a community venue like the art space. I, I saw a great potential there for it to work in partnership with the art space. So we had our opening night. Um, in September 2017, and we've been developing an audience ever since then, trying to bring acts to, to Creef and also to create an outreach into the local community to, uh, so that the folk club and the art space is a, a focus for um, you know, folk and roots musicians in the Strathairn area. And the, the sofa weekend, uh, how's that been for you, for you so far? And uh, I mean, how, how easy was it for you to, to persuade your guests to take part? Well, we've got previous acts uh, like Barbara Dimmock and Christopher Mara, Michael Mara's brother, who performed at the club, and uh, Ivan Drever. Um, uh, Donald Lindsay, uh, who makes his own woven pipes. We've got clips from, from these shows at, at the Folk Club in the past. So it'll give people who've uh, not been at the Folk Club before a wee feel of what Folk Club night is like at the art space. Then we've got a mix of uh, local musicians uh, who've really supported the club, like Nigel Gatherer and Margaret Bennett. So that's quite a quite a diverse programme altogether, and it's a quite a, quite a mix and match of uh, of different ages and talents there. Then it's a mix of acts that have been to the club before, that are professional acts, but also you know the, the centre part of the programme features uh, the local folk and roots scene, and it's been nice to get a lot of characters. Uh, from that scene onto onto the program, um, and uh, you know, a lot of people in Creef will know them, and, and for others, it will be an introduction to them. You know, people like Sandy Black and Scoogs, as well as Nigel Gatherer and uh, Margaret Bennett. So, Neil, how can we join in at the the Arts with the Folk Club? What time is it on? 
Well, the show's on at 8 o'clock on the 18th of July on the Strathairn Arts Facebook page. Perfect. Well, very much looking forward to it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Neil Thompson, the uh, Creef uh, Folk Club. Uh, very much looking forward to seeing uh, the Creef Folk Club in action. Uh, meanwhile, here's Neil back, at, uh, back playing his guitar. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, George. <laughs> Neil is a great guy and one of the very talented uh, people that are ensuring that Cree Folk Club keeps going from strength to strength. We move on now to another local guy who's uh, done pretty well for himself through the years. He's a big supporter of the arts in Strathern and even in lockdown he's been an extremely busy man. So let's see what he's been up to when I got the chance to interview Dennis Lawson. Dennis Lawson, lovely to see you again, sir. Last time I saw you, we were, uh, we were having drinks in Glasgow after your, your play art with uh, Nigel Havers and, uh, and, and Stephen. It was f fantastic. What a night. What a play. In fact, I believe you were going to be doing that again uh, this year, but got interfered with, with the lockdown. Uh, that's right, George. Yes, it was, uh, it was wonderful to... I have to say, I hadn't been on stage in Glasgow when we did art there for, oh, I can't remember how many years. And... Um, it was just fabulous to be back in Glasgow working like that on stage. And the Theatre Royal is, uh, I had no idea, it's got the most brilliant acoustics, the most fantastic theatre. So we had a, it was really lovely for me to be back in Glasgow working like that after many, many years. It was brilliant. And good to see you there, you know. Mm -hmm. And yes, we, um, we were due, there was talk of doing, um, my God, there was talk of doing a world tour ending up in Australia this year. Uh, but of course, that uh, proved to be kind of difficult. So, oh. no, it's gone. Anyway. The, the mileage it's given uh, all of you has been just fantastic. Uh, I mean, uh, N Nigel has done it for years now, uh, uh, on and off. Uh, Nigel, I think, has now done it maybe over a thousand times, that play. And Nigel and, my, and Steve Tompkinson and myself get on very, very well as, as men, as friends, but also particularly on stage. We really cook well together, you know. So. Um, it was a great pleasure to do that. Just fantastic. I loved it. The, the, <laughs> and how have you been keeping yourselves amused down in sunny Wiltshire? I've spent four months now in Wiltshire and I've never done that before. And it's making me, I have to say, it's, uh, it's been the place to do it, to have this strange experience because where our cottage is, we can walk out the back gate and just go into fields and hills and we've got a we've got a, a ten month old cocker spaniel puppy, so that's been fantastic to have a, a, a new dog with us on the way. You know, it's been she's just great fun. So, um, if I was going to do this weird thing anywhere, this would be the place. And we're I just feel very lucky to have this, and um, it's it's been um, a very interesting time for me because I I probably I don't think I've been this relaxed in years. It's quite interesting. As uh, as Karen you had you out on the, on the horses? <laughs> My fabulous wife Karen. Uh, no, George. No, I don't uh, think it's a very smart idea for me to get on a horse um, because if I just come off that horse and break a leg or something, that's me. I'm you know I'm um, I'm screwed in terms of uh, working and stuff. And although Karen's been riding and to, since she could walk literally, uh, she still falls off. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Regularly, so I'd, uh, I'd, you know, I, I admire from a distance, uh, George, but um, at, um, but I love all that. It's great. It's brilliant. The the lockdown has been uh, devastating for some people in the in the in the UK, and the arts is one of the the, the, the biggest uh, people that have had to suffer. I mean, the, the venues, the cinemas, the theatres, the the all the artists, musicians, um, the, the, themselves. So, I can ask your opinion, Dennis. If, uh, how do you think? What does the future hold? For, uh, for the venues and for the artists. Yeah. The, the, the difficult thing with the arts is, um, although we are a multi-billion pound industry, which we are, and we make huge amounts of money for the exchequer, um, politicians see it as a kind of bit of a sideshow, mm. quite literally, and uh, don't generally take it very seriously. So, um, 
of course, uh, one of the one of the tough things actually is for drama students, for instance, who are who have just qualified. Um, I I know of a young woman who's from Perthshire, in fact, who's who's just come out of uh, drama school this summer, and what the hell does she do? There's nothing to do. It's really really difficult. Television and film uh, will, on uh, I know, have plans to get back into gear and they'll have to be very careful the way they shoot, but because of the technicalities of that, you can shoot around that, people possibly not being too close, uh, the crew not being too close to each other, that kind of thing. So, but the theater, yeah, the theater's a tougher, a tough, a tougher one. But um, my own gut feeling is a couple of years. One of the big thing, theater thing, things about a theater is you have a live audience and it's, uh, it's not just uh, social distancing for the, for the actors and through rehearsal and, and, the, and the crew and the, all the backstage people. It's the, it's the audiences themselves. And um, so it, makes it, it, it does make it very, very difficult. Although it, there are tough times ahead, that's for sure. I don't think, my own gut feeling is, yes, I don't think the buildings will disappear. I think they will be there. And I think because of the commitment of the people who are behind them, they will get them back up and running. They will. It'll Absolutely. just take time. And there'll be a lot of, um, I'm afraid, collateral damage along the way. It's going to be tough for a lot of actors and designers, you know, everyone involved. Yeah, for sure. I'm afraid so. Mm -hmm. Well, well, it'll be interesting times, but uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the grassroots, the, the people themselves, I mean, you, you can't fault the, the, the enthusiasm of um, even our own local people in the, in, in the local Amdrams and comedy in Creef and Braco and, uh, and Muthal and, and the likes. Uh, and it's the, like you say, it's the passion and the, the heart of these people themselves that, that are going to keep theatre alive. Yeah. And uh, of course, we need the uh, people to, to, to actually come and buy tickets and, and support when, uh, when, 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 when these people are putting so much effort in. People will work it out. There'll be a way, I mean, in, for, for instance, it was interesting, um, you're talking about art, and Nigel Haber said to me recently, we could do, easily do a production of art that was socially distant, we could easily do that. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then he talks about doing it outdoors. That would so, work. So again, well, exactly. And so people, um, people will, people within the arts will come up with the solution. Perfect. Well, well, one of the solutions that's been put forward for our own local area in Creef is, um, is the Sotherns Online Festival of Arts, in fact, yeah. which we are delighted to have your help and so, so support um, in putting this together. Uh, Phil Mistecki came up with the idea and um, it's, uh, we're, we're busy tying it all to, together at the, at the moment. So I can I ask you just what's your opinion about the, the Sotherns um, uh, Online Festival of Arts and, and how, uh, how it would bring the community together? It's a really terrific initiative, I think. And this, and, um, I think um, the Southern Arts, the space itself, really deserves to survive, and uh, it will because, of the, again, because of the commitment of of yourself and people behind it. And um, so, I think this this particular um, um, online stream you've got going is a great idea. It's really nice, brilliant. Um, well, we are very, very grateful to you for for all your help and support uh, throughout the whole thing. I mean, as well as trying to give. The local musicians are an outlet um, to, to keep their, their, their audiences who are, the audiences themselves are, have a hunger to, to, to have the, 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 to hear their own musicians uh, back and uh, we're, we're also got to so them has got young talent where um, you were talking about your, 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 your young girl coming out of um, a drama school and things we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're trying to give a stepping stone if you like for um, for uh, so them got young talent yeah great uh, fantastic well uh, let, please let me know how it goes you know will do. Now, once all the restrictions are, are, um, are, are free, we're all back to whatever. Hey, can, can I allowed to ask you, hey, what are your plans? Have you, I mean, uh, holidays, are, they, are, you, are you planning to go off on holiday or are, are you going to be straight back into work? My goal this year uh, is nothing to do with work at all, it's play. I'm hoping to get to Italy in September. So I'm keeping, we're keeping an eye on that. Um, there's a particular... Um, uh, beach I've gone to in Italy for about 30 years and um, it's a very special place for me and um, uh, so in fact uh, Karen and I uh, got married on that beach oh, yeah. just, just under three years ago that's our, that's our, 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 our next our next aim I'm also though uh, hoping to do a little bit of a road trip in August with um, uh, three friends of mine from school 
from Morrison's. And um, when I was at Morrison's, there were five of us went through school together. We were known as the Zed Men <laughs> for reasons that remain shrouded in secrecy. No one knows why. And um, we're still very close. Uh, sadly, Ron Kidd, who's a Creef guy, um, died rather young, which is very sad. But um, the rest of us are still in close contact. So we're going to do a bit of a road trip up to Edinburgh initially, and then I'll certainly be over in Creek for sure. What, yeah. what, what, what a name for a programme as well. <laughs> we'll, get uh, Z, we'll all get Z-Men t-shirts made. And oh, <laughs> well, we had, um, believe it or not, when we were at school, we had ties made oh. with a little bed and a gold laurel round it, which we wore constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Ideal. Well, one of the things you've been doing, that I know you've been doing anyway, uh, when you've been locked down in Wiltshire, is um, you did that fantastic poem, Tear Virus. Um, ah. can, can I ask you, I mean, how did you come across uh, Willie Sinclair's poem? Well, again, uh, interesting enough, I'll take you back to the Z-Men. Um, one of us uh, is a guy called Colin Clark, who, again, who, who was one of the Zs at school, and he has a place up in Aberfeldy, and he's got a place in Edinburgh, and um, so he was... He sent it to the rest of us and said, have a look at this, it's hilarious. And I read it um, and I thought it was completely brilliant. Um, I'll, I think I'll try and learn this because, you know, uh, as an actor, it's good to keep the uh, memory muscle going. So I thought, well, it's quite a complicated little thing to learn. So I started to learn it just for my own amusement. And then I thought, and then I thought oh, maybe I'll put this on tape or record it and send it out to the family just to the family and so i did that um it took me about a week's rehearsal <laughs> and um all the um uh all the clothes i wear in the in the in that uh piece that belong to my wife karen all of them from from the hat to the very short um, scarf that i wear and um, <laughs> So uh, that sort of set it as a family, and my sister Carol, uh, who lives in Crete, uh, is a good friend of Fred Macaulay's. And so she sent it to Fred, and he was the one actually who said, um, I should put it online. He said, You should put this online, it's, it's terrific. So that wasn't my intention at all. So we loaded it onto um, YouTube and then Facebook, and it's had well over half a million hits on Facebook so far, uh, which is extraordinary. I've never been on social media in my life, so suddenly I'm all viral all over the place. <laughs> but, um, it's well, just me, from I, I, instead of it just going to, to, to family and friends as you originally, originally intended, it's now been seen in just about every continent. Well, it has been seen in just about in every continent and um, in many countries uh, throughout the world. Now, for for yeah. those of you who haven't seen uh, Tear Virus, it's a fantastic poem, but Dennis has taken it to a whole new level. Uh, have a look for yourselves. Tear a virus. Two months ago, we didn't ken your name, nor och to boot you. But lots of things have changed since then. I really must salute you. Your spreading power is quite intense. You're feeding like a gannet. Disruption caused is so immense, you've shaken our wee planet. Corona used to be a beer. You garnished it with limes. But now it fills us all with fear. These days are scary times. They shaking horns, nor pecking lips, is what we're all advised. But scrub them, we'll wreck to the tips, and then we'll all survive. But stay within the hooshy bide. Nay sneaking out for strolls, and check the lavvy every hour, and stop take your loo rolls. Our holidays have been put off. Now that's the jet to patter. Put on your thermals, have a laugh, and paddle down the water. Canary Isles, huh, no for a while. No need for suntan cream. And all because of this wee bug, we can to be 19. Now, boredom surely will set in. But have a read, or doodle, or plan your menu for the month. We 95 pot noodles. When these run out, just look about. A change it would be nice. We beans and pasta by the ton and twenty stain of rice. But didn't he think you'll wipe us out? Aye, true, a few have died. Bubonic, 
bird flu and TB, they came, they left, they tried. You might be gallus now, my friend, as you skip from cup to cup, but once we get our vaccine, your number will be up. You bastard! Ha! Huh. fucking deal with that. Ha! 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 I've seen that umpteen times, Dennis, and every time I watch it, you know, it makes me laugh at all the more. I mean, your timing and everything with it is absolutely fantastic. Oh, that's brilliant. Thanks, George. Thank you. It was great. It was just a great fun to do. It was a scream to do, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Very inspirational. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, I, I'll tell you, it was nice. I, um, uh, uh, Willie Sinclair, who wrote it, I thought after, the, all, after it went sort of viral like that, I thought I really, I, I finally managed to track him down and I rang him up and had a chat with him. And he works um, at, on an estate, I think near Dunfermline, somewhere like that. And the, um, so he's an estate worker who loves Burns and, you know, so I'm in touch with Willie, which is really nice. You know. Oh, that's fantastic. My, ne my next question was going to be asking, have you ever actually spoken to, to Willie Singler? But I'm so glad that the two of you have made a connection because, oh, yeah. it, it, I mean, what a great partnership that would have been. That is yeah. fantastic, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dennis, I, c I can't thank you enough for all your help and support, but uh, b b before we go, when are we likely to see you back up in Creef? Well, um, I, you should... Um, as I say, with luck, if I do this road trip, all being well, um, end of August. Yeah, I'll be around the end of August. End of August. Well, we're, we're all looking forward to it. Uh, Dennis Lawson, thank you so much for helping support us uh, with this, this fantastic weekend that we're doing and uh, for all your help and support for the whole community because you, you um, you're very, very good at supporting uh, the locals in the Southern area. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dennis Lawson. Thank you very much, George. It's been such a pleasure. Good luck with it all. Is that what all you actors do, George? Dress up in women's clothing? <laughs> Not all of us, Megan. No. And even then, only at the weekends. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what a great poem there performed by Dennis Lawson. Um, he's such a great guy and we're really lucky to have his support there. Um, so we've just got a wee promotion video coming up for Strathairn's Got Young Talent. Um, and then hopefully we'll get a little preview of Chris's gigs coming up shortly as well. Oh, um Looking forward to that. So uh, we've got a couple of technical difficulties here, so <laughs> while, while we're sorting that out, just to prove that we're live, by the way, uh, me and Megan have been deliberately including a couple of mistakes in there just, to, just in case you think this is all pre-recorded. Pre uh, some of you might be able to see behind me here, th th these are um, scrubs that were made by uh, various people for, uh, during the, the, the lockdown, uh, and uh, the, these scrubs are featured on the Sunday show uh, as well. Well, we're going to be talking a lot more in depth about that and uh, who they were made for and how many hundreds of um, sets of scrubs were made by local sores in the com community. Uh, they, they've done a fantastic job. So this is the first time that we've held anything like this, uh, a live show like this uh, in, in Southern Arts. Um, and uh, we'll have to say it's, it, there's been an awful lot of people involved in it all. It doesn't all just get to, to come together itself. As with all these things, there's uh, an army of people behind it all, all uh, hoping that it's all going to work. Um, so they, we've, we've recorded some of the bands that are going to be playing over the weekend, but other bands are going to be playing live, uh, actually, same as what we have now, is uh, putting it live down through the camera. And so there's a mix and match of that uh, all weekend. Uh, the children's, the, sorry, so has got young talent tomorrow. It is live throughout. There's a couple of recorded uh, videos um, of the children in there, but the rest of the show is entirely live, so we've got quite a lot uh, to, to fill in there uh, to go by the seat of our pants. And uh, I think the technical exits are now over with, <laughs> and we can go to back to Megan. So, yep, next up we've got uh, a preview of Chris's gigs um, show that's going to be coming on after we finish up here. Um, Chris Grace from Comrie, she puts on a fabulous variety of uh, gigs and performances across the year so we're very lucky to have her taking part in this festival um, and see what she's organised for this. So here's a little preview of that.
Chris Grace, how lovely to see you. Thank you so much for taking part in the Strathern Online's Festival of Arts. It's great to have you here. Pleasure. Now, coming up, you've got uh, Chris's gigs right after this. Chris's gigs has been fantastic for Comrie, Creef and the whole of Strathern area. Tell us about how it, how it came about and how hard you've worked about it uh, through the years. Um, well, I think it started, well, the first gig I ever did was in 2004, which was my sister's album launch. She's a musician and she's always brought lots of musicians through my house. And uh, she loves Comley and asked if she could use the, the rural hall to launch her album in 2004. So I helped her to organise that. And it's just grown from there. Um, I think the Chris's Gigs brand actually came about about three or four years ago. Prior to that, we just did gigs. But uh, it has become definitely Chris's Gigs now. And we have an online presence and we've got a big audience and we've got mailing lists with over 500 people. And yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. But there's an awful lot of self-interest in there because I bring musicians to me, which saves me going to the musicians. Um, um, they often stay with me and the parties afterwards are fairly legendary. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's great fun. Thoroughly enjoy it. I mean, it's great to have you as part of the Southern Online Festival of Arts. Uh, how has this been for you? How's, this, how's the sofa uh, merged with Chris's gigs? Has it been it's, extra hard work for you? Well, it's not been particularly hard work because um, musicians are always very keen to perform. Um, I, I had to think a bit about how to do this um, when, when Phil asked me. And I, I thought, well, we have such a wealth of musical talent locally. Let's showcase that. So I asked six different performers locally if they would um, record something for the sofa gig. And they've all very willingly done that. All six performers have, um, have really... Uh, stepped up to the mark and we've got a really good show for you tonight. Perfect, who can we look forward to seeing? Well I have um, Finn Paul who many people know and has performed um, a number of times locally. He's a young singer-songwriter who now lives in London. We've got the Erratics who are Rod Paul, that's his dad, Colin Roxburgh and Robin Spearing. Um, they're fabulous and everybody loves them. Halfway to Barra, Kenny Graham and Linda Ganell. Um, the, we've got some classical music for you. We've got a really eclectic mix. We've got Brina and Finn Mannion from Creef, who are um, amazingly talented classical musicians. Um, Connor Sinclair, who uh, many will know lives in Creef, well, used to live in Creef, now lives in Glasgow, teaches at the Piping Centre in Glasgow, and uh, he's, perfor he's performing tonight a really beautiful uh, whistle set. And then we have Moyenda, who live in Breco, and they are a Malawian Scottish fusion band. So it's a really eclectic mix tonight. Fantastic. Well, uh, really looking forward to that. Uh, Chris, uh, thank you so much for, for all your hard work and putting all this together. Uh, very much looking forward to tonight. It's a, it's a great start off to the whole weekend. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Chris Grace and Chris's gigs. Thank you. Thank you. That was Chris Grace there from Comrie. Um, so we're coming towards the end of the first part of our sofa show now. Um, we'd just like to say a big thank you to the tech people who have come together to make this event possible, which is Blaze Buster Productions, Johnston Media, Global Events 24-7 and Capture Scotland. So please enjoy yourselves this weekend. Uh, share the sofa events with all your friends and family on social media, wherever you can. And please donate whatever you can via the www.justgiving.com site. The details are on the bottom of the screen, as you can see there. So if you could do that, that would be fantastic. And also, if you want to, uh, for any further details, just go onto the Strathern Arts website. All the details of everything that we're doing this weekend are all there. You just need to click and have a look at it. Join in whenever you can. In the meantime, we are going to pour ourselves a few drinks and watch Chris's gig coming up at 8 o'clock. Um, so for now, that's goodbye from us. Yep, this has been the first of the Sofa shows this weekend and the first live event that we've done. And uh, so far, so <laughs> good. Thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in and uh, enjoy the weekend. Have a great time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.